Welcome to the Non Sports Podcast, episode 19, the home of sports talk for everyone. I'm David. I'm Jason. Welcome aboard. Uh, Battle of baseball season uh, this time of year. You're going to do a game soon, next week? Next Thursday, hopefully, yeah. That's not a doubleheader, is it? No. <laughs> no? I, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, now you see where I'm going with it. Because, <laughs> you know, just, 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 just roll into the first period here of uh, of what we're going to be talking about here. Uh, the first thing is going to be seven seven inning no hitter and home run derbies. Now, the reason why we brought this up, because we figured this would be a good topic to discuss, being this happened recently. Madison Bob Gardner throws a seven inning no hitter in a double header. Now, they're not counting that as a double header. I mean, sorry. a no hitter. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I've got a little ahead of myself there. They're, they're not counting that as a no hitter, which I find BS because it's a scheduled game by MLB. It's not like he was pulled during that, you know, at the seventh inning. That's just the game schedule. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I would consider myself a, a traditionalist. Um, but if the rule moving forward is seven inning double headers, then by MLB's own estimation, it should be a no hitter. And look, I, I get the argument against it because I've heard a lot of people say we wouldn't at this point, we don't know if he would have made the entire nine inning game. Would he have had that? Would he have carried that no hitter through all nine innings? We don't know. But the problem is that was taken out of his hands by Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean, if it was taken out of his hands by Major League Baseball, then he has no control over that. I mean, he did what he had to do for seven innings, and that's what he had to do. Right. And that was, and that was the game. It's not like he goes seven innings and then gets pulled, and then somebody else finishes the other two. No. That's, you know, that's the thing of it. Now, I was reading, if it would go extra innings, so if it would go nine innings on a double header, then that would have counted. That would have counted as a no-hitter if it would have went nine innings. I, I think this – again, this is the – as of now, this is the rule, and this is the rule moving forward. Um, I think that's – they're going to have to come up with something better then. I would think so because for that to be kind of as a no-hitter – like I said, it would have had to go nine innings. So basically the score would have had to stay 0-0 zero, zero all the way through. Right. And but the, the game that, in this sense is scheduled only for seven innings without extra innings. It, it's The game is an, a seven-inning game because the next game that day is going to be a seven-inning game. Um, so if, And I have no stake in this game because he's with the Diamondbacks. But he threw a the the game complete, all seven innings, didn't have a hit. To me, yeah. based on their rules, that's that's a no hitter in my book. Well, I would agree with that just because one, like we said, MLB took it out of their hand, you know, took it out of his hands, and two, he pitched it. It's not like he was a reliever and came in X amount of innings in or anything like that, he pitched the whole seven innings. But like you said, he, we don't know if he would have went the other two, but this was a sanctioned game of seven innings because it was a, because it was a doubleheader game. Right. And I think to me the biggest reason – the biggest reason for giving him the acknowledgement of the no-hitter is that this was MLB's choice. He didn't have a say in this situation. He's not going to be the only pitcher to face this situation. Then maybe they should have, you don't want to say an asterisk, but maybe there should be an asterisk beside him. Have it say no hitter, asterisk, seven inning double header game. Oh, well, baseball is full of asterisks. There's They're an entire team in Houston called the asterisks. I don't know if you know this or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but in this case, I think an asterisk would not be a bad thing 
I think the asterisk would be justified if giving him the credit for the no-hitter, explaining why his no-hitter has an asterisk. And then the breakdown is seven-inning doubleheader. Well, it, um, like you said, that's if MLB is going to be going that direction, then that's what needs to happen. They need to have some better ruling on on this because, I mean, think about from a, a pitcher's point of view. Your game, your game doubleheader is, is a mindset for that, for seven innings, because that's that's the rule. You go out there, you pitch your heart out for seven innings, and then get told you don't have a no-hitter, despite you just threw it. Right. Or even if you have, let's say, a perfect game. Because that, you know, it, what if that's the situation? You just threw a perfect game because a seven-inning game. Now, like it was stopped by rain, you know, by any type of weather or he was pulled, but that's going to fall into the same situation. No, I, I, I agree with you on this. Um, and for, for that to happen, I mean, he played his heart. I'm, 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 imagine how he feels, you know, that he just pitched his heart out and he's not going to give credit for what he did. You know, it's not going to go in any books or anything. It's just going to be, hey, congratulations, you won the game. You got the W. That's it. Yeah. Um, again, I, I think it should be. There should be a no hitter. There should be an asterisk, with the explanation of why. Um, the only time it will be an asterisk, like you said, it would be a good thing. In this case, I think it would. It would. It would explain the justification for the no hitter, and really, this is a mess created by MLB with the seven inning doubleheader. Well, MLB is so full of confusion, it's ridiculous. Between the umps and rulings, it's it's ridiculous. The umps are giving them cause for the automated um, strike zone. Well, for how many umps that have a strike a, a strike zone outside of the actual strike zone? And well, we got it. We got we got to remember not not to go full out defending umpires, but I mean they are human. Um, there's no guarantee that my strike zone would be the same as your strike zone if we were both umpires. Um, yeah, but when you watch on a consistent basis, the same ump over and over and over again, <laughs> calling strikes when it's four feet off the plate, you know, uh, just a bit outside, you know, when, when you have that type of pitch and it's called a strike or when a strike goes where it should be and it's called a ball, on a consistent basis, like you said, umps are human, happens once in a while, okay, fine. But when it's consistent, come on. Well, speaking of umpires and the, the automated strike zone, um, so that got its start, and it was tested in the Atlantic League, which is now an MLB uh, prospect league, I believe is what it's called now, right? Give me a second here. Oh, and it's affiliate. It's an affiliated league, an MLB affiliated league, a partner league. Um, so news came out this week that another MLB partner league is going to be testing something new, and it got quite an interesting reaction. The Pioneer League is going to be testing out a home run derby instead of extra innings. How do you feel about that, as a hockey fan? That could get interesting because that's basically the same thing as a shootout, you know, because you got your overtime, then you have a shootout. Now the question is, let's say, for example, in the Pioneer League, they go the set innings. Then let's, what do they do? Like one or two innings where it's, they put the person on second, you know, they, they, they put the player on second, they do two innings like that. Nobody wins. Then they go to the Derby. Or is it just after that set innings, it goes straight into the dirt. Okay, so from from the press release, and I gotta I gotta state here, uh, this is the Pioneer League's first season as a an independent league. From 1939 to 2019, they were affiliated baseball. They were an official minor league system for MLB, uh, but with the contraction and changes, they moved on to being an independent league, who are now a partner league of MLB. Um, so the, the PBL will test out the usage of designated pitch hitters and pinch runners, and on a larger scale, the use of a sudden-death knockout format 
to resolve games that end in nine inning ties, i.e. home run derby format supplementing the traditional extra inning format. Um, it does. The knockout format is being implemented to avoid ex- excessive strain on pitching staffs. Um, I can see that. I can see that as a helpful thing. Each team will designate one player to receive five pitches in a sudden death home run duel. If the initial first round ends in a tie, each team will then designate a second hitter for another five pitch showdown. And it will continue until a team is declared the winner. It's basically the same thing as a shootout. Yes. You know, you you pick the first three, those three don't do, you know, don't let's say it ends in a tie after those three. They just go until somebody wins. Um, You know, I've seen a lot of people up in arms about this. I've seen mixed reactions too on this. I've seen where, People said it should stay where, you know, if they're going to do this, it should stay where it's at. Don't bring it to the pros. Uh, some some people might love it in the pros. Some people, well, you know, some of the fans might love it. Wake up call. These guys in the Pioneer League are getting paid to play baseball. It's in the pros. Um, secondly. <laughs> well, you know, you, you know what I mean. I know, but I, I, I've i seen people say that and it's like, you're kind of, you're missing the connection here, people. Yeah, um, but a, a, a lot of times when you say Pioneer League, it's, you know, everybody thinks MLB when they think pros. They don't think the Pioneer Leagues. They don't think uh, the minor leagues because, I get it's, it. you know, it's, it's just like in hockey where you have the NHL, AHL, ECHL. That's what a lot of people's mind says. I mean, I, you know, I'm with you on the affiliation and everything else with it, but it's the fact that people pe- people's mindset are not focused on that. They're focused on, don't put it in MLB. Some people put it in MLB. But, but um, when you say pros, everybody thinks MLB, pros, and then everything else is, it, you know, it just trickles down. So first That's, off, I, I think... I just want to get that out of the way there. No, you're fine. Um, first off, I think people are missing on the part that this is, they're experimenting with this. They're trying this out for this season. It may not stick. It may not go into next season. Um, secondly, they're an MLB partner league. Uh, so... MLB is looking at this and seeing how it performs. If it performs well, it might be implemented in a future season in MLB. They have not really implemented the automated uh, strike zone yet, even though it was tested two seasons ago. Um, I think the whole purpose for these partner leagues is to test out new things in the game. Which is good. Right. Um, I go back to us seeing... Hagerstown was what short season single A. We mm-hmm. saw them testing out the runner on second in extra innings. Yep, and uh, and yeah, and that's now it's actually, implemented. Yeah, yep, um, and that was and and that was interesting to watch too. As from, here's some things I look at um, in comparison with hockey. I think extra innings baseball is is it's frustrating, but it's fun to watch. Um, it tests the metal of the team both the team who loses and the team who wins. Um, the winning team tends to be the the team that either didn't make a mistake or were the toughest team between the two. At the same token, a home run derby can be very exciting. Oh, yeah. And I mean... some fans do not want to sit through 15, 16 extra innings, which games can go. Mm-hmm. Um, in that case... A home run derby could send people home happy much earlier than typical extra inning baseball. Um, and now, look, I'm looking at this completely objectively. Um, I'm not saying one way or another which way I feel on this. I'm just making the case for both. Um, well, 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 here's something interesting that I feel that would be good for the fans, too, uh, with, with the home run derby. Which I think, as we talked with baseball together uh, with uh, with Brian Briggs and trying to get fans into the game, bring in new fans, this might actually be a good thing because what if, let's say they go into the home run derby, that player, if they hit a home run for it, they sign the ball. That to me would bring fans, in in my opinion, that would help bring fans because that that's more of a chance. For you to catch a ball, that's a more opportunity for you. To get, and then plus fan interaction with the player. I mean, how many times have we seen fans interact with players and 
they're just all so excited, so happy, and it's just so cheerful, and that which is all point of the game. So, um, what I could see being done because we've seen all different kinds of gimmicks in the minor leagues, um, maybe have a special ticket that you can buy. Like, let's say it's the top of the ninth. Ninth, it's a tied game, and. The ninth is the, at the bottom of the ninth. It's still tied game. Teams go back to their dugout and flash sale five bucks. You can buy a ticket, go out in the outfield, go in the outfield seats. If you get the ball, you get a ticket to the next game. There you go. Yeah, that's because I mean, be cool. I, I'm just thinking like the Senators have that tennis ball toss. You pay five bucks for ten balls, and if you get something, you could win a freaking sweet if you get your ball yeah. in the hoop, right? That Five bucks. X, you, you limit it to X amount of fans. Whoever gets that home that, that winning home run ball, they get a ticket to the next game or something. So now I the know. team's making extra money. You're bringing fans in. You're bringing a fan back for another game. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of positive that can come out of this. It's just people don't want to look at that. Well, baseball is deeply rooted in tradition, um, and we value those traditions quite a bit, just well, like just like hockey yeah. fans do. And I think that those are the things that make us stand out from other sports fans, uh, because we do value the, the history and traditions of the sport. Um, but now, in the playoffs, would they do the home run, or would they keep that to the extra innings? See, in my opinion, I would keep the extra innings for the playoffs. But put the home run derby, like in hockey, with with the shootouts in the regular season, and the playoffs keep it to the extra, you know, to, to the extra overtimes. Do the same thing with baseball. Regular season gets the home run derby, playoffs gets the extra innings. I don't see anything saying that. That would that would be, you know, in 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 my opinion, that would be the way to do it. Because, like you said, in traditionalists, I mean, you're not going to want to see a hockey playoff game go to a shootout. No. When when in years past, you're so used to a game going three, four, five, six, seven overtimes. You know, so that's the same thing in baseball. If you're in a playoff game, you want to, you know, you get extra innings, you get extra innings. No, you want to grind that out and show you're the team that deserves the win. Exactly. When um, it comes to the playoffs. In the regular season, a win's a win, home run derby, fine. Just like a shootout. Like I said, I... I I, I like extra inning baseball to some degree. Um, I get frustrated when it happens a lot, um, especially with my <laughs> my team that I cheer for. Um, but at the same time, I can see I can see positives for for the home run derby to bring in more fans to widen the fan base, if you will. Um, the Pioneer League even said in their press release that this does not mean it's going to be implemented by MLB in the near future. This is just an experiment to see how it goes. Um, I mean, it could be another, let's say, five years before MLB even looks at it. Right. This so, is you know, just... it's, it's nothing like it's going to be out, hey, next season, this is the rules. No, it could be five years down the road. Okay, we've seen how the reactions are in the Pioneer League. Okay, maybe we'll start up here now. Right. This is just so, to see how it functions in a live setting. So, I mean, I feel, I, you know, like I said, I feel that if they keep it to where you can get fans into the game, I think they'll have it. I think they'll have it good. If they can, you know, like you said, do a flash sale on tickets just to get people in, I think that's the way to do it. Because think about it, you get a home run ball for, you know, during the home run derby, you get the option to get it signed. That's going to bring a fan back. That's going to bring a fan, you know, a fan to the game, interacting with the player, like we said earlier. But, you know, but, you know, people just need to realize this is not now for MLB. I know when I say pros, you know, like, like we said earlier, this is, you know, the affiliation, everything. People think pros is MLB, not this. Because people don't know Pioneer League. People don't know any of this. Right. So let's just keep that in mind, people, that this is, you know, a testing 
phase right now. Will it be cool to see? Yeah, but uh, we'll have to see what's down the road. So on that note, that is the end of period one. So we'll take a, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. What's up? My name is Matt Durvine, and I'm here to tell you about the two podcasts that I host on the Club Kayfabe Creative Communities CKCC Radio. The first is called By the Numbers, where I interview wrestlers whose matches I have refereed in my nearly 20-year independent professional wrestling career. Tune in and hear the stories of the matches and the stories behind the matches themselves. My other show is called The A Show, co-hosted by Chris Decker. Each episode, Chris and I are joined by one or two special guests, and together we hold a mock draft based on a specific year and wrestling promotion, and then build cards based on our drafted rosters. You, the listener, decide who has the best card by voting on our Twitter poll each episode. You can hear By the Numbers and The A Show Mondays at 9 a.m., alternating weeks on CKCC Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Period 2. So something different, or I'm sorry, something new just happened. Uh, I think it was uh, this week where NBC is not covering NHL games as of next year. It's all going to go to TNT, which I find interesting. Because NBC has been their bread and butter for whew, ages. I find it interesting as well uh, for multiple reasons. Um so this is really unexpected. Uh, first off, I mean, we knew that NBC Sport. I mean, you got to think this. This is now the third time. This is like our third update on this topic. <laughs> In theory, yeah, it is because we covered of... NBC Sportsnet closing down. Mm-hmm. We covered the NHL signing and coming back home to ESPN, and now we're covering this. Um, this is covering multiple episodes. This is great, actually. <laughs> It's giving us, giving us fodder to talk about. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like going to, I don't know, I, every, every time I think of TNT or TBS, I always think of baseball, not hockey. Jeez, I think of wrestling and Mama's Family reruns. Um. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. <laughs> Wow. You weren't expecting Mama's Family. I know you were. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was not. That one got me. <laughs> uh, wow. This is when you need to put up the technical difficulty thing. We'll have some music play. Um, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a seven-year deal, which includes the NFL Finals, Winter Classic, because Winter Classic and the Finals are only held on NBC. Right. So this is definitely going to be interesting to see how they're going to play this out. I mean, hell, I think they already screwed up the uh, the opening uh, picture of it because they had uh, an Edmonton Oilers captain that was not Connor McDavid. That's the best part because it wasn't Connor McDavid, but they had a C on his jersey. And Connor McDavid is the captain of the Oilers, but he was not the captain in the picture. Mm, interesting. Well, they just screwed up. Okay, so I, you know, so obviously, um, these deals take place next season. The ESPN and the T and the Turner Sports ones, right? So what I'm looking at, 2022, the finals will be on ABC. 2023, the finals will be on TNT or TBS, and then it'll alternate every year until 2028, right? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, because I'm looking at that myself here. The televised ABC 22, 24, 26, and 28 as part of the deal. So, um, and according to this, uh, it also writes with uh, one conference final round per season. Uh, half of the first two rounds of the playoffs, 25 first season games on ABC or ESPN. So I, I actually think this is a win. For the NHL. Um, They're just washing their hands on NBC altogether at this point. I don't know if I can fault them. Because, I, how, I mean, how in the know were they on the news of NBC Sportsnet closing? I mean, it was a lot. It was a very out of nowhere decision. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is, this has to be a topic. 
And then the assumption was, and it wasn't just our assumption, it was assumption of the sports media that everything was just going to move to the USA Network. And it's myself, and, and I know a, a bunch of our listeners are wrestling fans, WWE moved their Wednesday night show to Tuesday nights in anticipation of the NHL going to going oh, wow. to USA. Um, I didn't know that. So here it gets crazier now to bring the wrestling thing into it. Their competition on Wednesday nights airs on TNT. Ooh. Who might now be moving to Tuesday nights. So they went from a Wednesday night war to a two. They might be going to a Tuesday night war because the NHL is now going to be on TNT. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think of that one. I did not uh, even think of that one. That's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> well, Corinne, I mean, the NHL joins the NBA, MLB, NCAA men's basketball as partners with Turner Sports. So. Is this going to be now, are they going to try to get a lot of the other ones in there? Like, are they going to try to get NFL, which I doubt they ever will, because Turner Sports and CBS. Turner Sports did have a deal with the NFL in the 90s and early 2000s, because they had, they had, yeah, they did. They had part of Sunday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Sunday Night Football will all, would all alternate between ESPN and TNT, ironically enough. Um, Turner has a good history of sports coverage. Braves centric sports coverage for baseball, nonetheless. They have a good history of, of NBA and, and prior uh, NFL coverage. Their NCAA coverage for the tournament is spectacular. Um, again, I think this is a win situation for the NHL. Um, they're back on ESPN, they're back on ABC. Um, while the NBC deal was good and it was good based on the fact that they were on versus that became NBC sports net. NBC was kind of all in on them to some degree. Um, they're back home. Uh, yeah, I say I mean, that I've said that a lot, but they're back home. Like where the NHL belongs is on ESPN. ESPN was, even though their first cable deal was on USA, ESPN really took the NHL and ran with it. Um, then yeah, well, the, the NHL. Is, go ahead. Sorry. Well, the thing is, I don't know how many times that we saw the a NHL playoffs on ABC. You know, and they had any, you know, like we discussed there. I one can episode. see John Saunders in the control room talking about it. Um. Yeah. I mean, and it's you know countless games on ESPN. I mean, there was any you know as we discussed in another episode, NHL tonight. You know, they had that, so, which was on ESPN. I mean, we so, talked about classic moments I, that were on ESPN. I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have the Flyers top 10. Now, this was a few years ago I bought this, so uh, there's probably other games to be added to that. But the top 10, 10 games, and some of those were ESPN, ABC games. Right. That were considered classic games. <clears throat> And now, um, Turner Turner's channels, and Turner Turner's channels cover TNT, TBS, True TV. Um, they're in just as many homes as USA is, so it's not like they're losing viewership, or they're not. It's not like they're losing potential viewers by switching to Turner. They're actually they're. Yeah. Technically, they are because TNT and TBS are in ninety percent of the homes, just like USA. I mm -hmm. think True TV is in like eighty-five percent of the homes. Um, that's technically two more channels than they had with USA. And and now just reading on here, in addition, uh, there'll be more according to the according to the article here, more than one thousand out of market games each regular season on ESPN Plus, which will replace NHL TV. No, wait, NHL so, TV or NHL Center Ice? This says NHL TV. Uh, let me read it again here. In addition, they they will stream more than 1,000 out-of-market games each regular season on ESPN+, Plus, which will replace NHL.TV. NHL TV. Yeah, NHL.TV. Sorry. Okay. 
I'm like, they're, they're, there's no way they're doing away with the NHL network. Sorry. No, they're not going to do You threw no, me for a giving. loop on that. Sorry. No, no, sorry. I didn't add the dot there, like dot com or something. I just, sorry about that. I didn't mess with you. But still, I mean, that's still a big thing. So it here's it. Because, because people, because I, you know, I think the NHL dot TV re, uh, replaced the NHL center ice because you don't see that anymore. You always see the TV. So with that going away now, of, of, of apparently with this and everything going to ESPN and ESPN plus there's more subscribers for ESPN plus. So here's another so. thing to think about. Bleacher report is a well-known sports website. It's owned by, Tor- by Turner, oh. which means more articles, more news features on the NHL. So they're going to have a monopoly with all this. I'm saying this is great stuff for the NHL. This, this, this more than anything will open the door for old fans to come back, new fans to come in. Well, I don't think the NHL really gets as much credit as it deserves to begin with. Because I, people think of this just ballerinas with sticks. We've long had this discussion. Um, the NHL players are out of the top four, the least paid. I mean, they still have great contracts compared to people like me and you. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'm not saying they're like in in poverty by any means, but they're not paid as much as the other leagues. I think the NHL really needs to change its its economic structure and get away from being ticket-driven and being rights-driven. And I think these two deals are a step in that direction, um, which then opens up better pay for the players. but I also think in regards to athletic wise, I think hockey players are underrated. I, we've had the discussion nor- many times between friends and family. Um, what would you, who would you rather, the simple way to put it is who would you rather get hit by a 300 pound lineman running at you at five miles per hour or a 200 pound, you know, Great train, <laughs> right. Uh, right winger coming at you at 45, 50 miles an hour on skates. I'll take the 300 pound lineman. Yeah, at least with that, I can at least step to the side. And well, the, you know, the inertia if, isn't going to be as much involved as it would be with the. No, I mean, if you, you know, if you get hit by a guy that's 200 pounds, you know, that's a freight train coming at you on skates. You know, despite, you know, people may think 200 pounds compared to 300 pounds, but coming to you on skates, going to let's say even 40 miles an hour, one, that's moving. Two, it's going to hurt. Oh, no matter how you look at it. You know, yeah, especially when you see a helmet just go popping like a rock of socking robot. <clears throat> Those are always the best. But I but, think, I think you know, these deals, Turner, the Turner deal, the ABC ESPN deal, uh, this is great stuff for the NHL. It really is. And it's, it's, a, it's you know what? This is Batman doing his job finally he stepped it up with the pandemic and the bubble About time there's he the stepped, bubble again he stepped there's it up the with bubble. the bubble there's he's, the bubble. he's taking it to another level now with these deals there's the bubble we can never get away from the bubble he did a great job i know i know the horse is dead matt okay i know the horse is dead <laughs> <laughs> um, jason's just trying to give it cpr to bring it back <laughs> this point um, it's not working <laughs> but no, i think yeah, he he's really trying to get more fans involved getting more outreach to, to to more people and by doing this i think he's bringing people trying to bring people back to the game like you said earlier that did watch it on espn that did watch it on abc that fell in love with watching it on there and just could care less about nbc having it but like you said it's, it, it, it came home. It's, you know, it's, it's home to where it should be. I really think, um, just r- real quick before we wrap this up, I really think that the move to Versus and how few channels, uh, how few cover, how, much, how not available Versus was. Versus killed them. To... I, I feel Versus and LON killed them. I think O-L-A. it took fans away from the sport. It did not help them gain fans. They lost fans. Oh yeah, well, I, I know growing up when 
it went to versus where I lived, all I had was, was satellite. And the satellite channels that we had did not cover versus. It took a while just to, you know, j- just for them to say, hey, okay, we got a problem here with our, bro- with our broadcasting. But it took a couple of years. And right. I mean, how many times did we watch games on center ice just because of that? Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot before we, we moved out of our parents' homes. Yeah, well, what, two in the morning, there we are still watching games. But I think with this, though, like you said, it's in more houses now. So they're going to have more covers. You're going to have more people to watch it. They're going to not only bring back fans, like you said, also create more because there's more coverage. It's out there. more. Right. It's not just it's we're only specific to this. It's out there now. So I feel it is, like you said, a good thing. Batman finally doing his job. Besides the bubble. <laughs> um, one yeah, day this, that's just gonna pop for him. <laughs> this was good stuff. <laughs> so this was a good topic, and uh, I, I like that. You know, we're keeping we're keeping everyone up to date on this. Uh, yeah, uh, we got this. So I know we covered this a couple of times already throughout the you know throughout the episodes. And it's an ongoing it's just, saga. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, well, like we said earlier, it was a big thing from when they said, oh, yeah, we're going to go to, you know, potentially go to the USA, then all of a sudden, nope, we're going to ESPN. It's like, what? Well, wh- how? What wh- What happened? Is it, you know, well, like you said, everything was expected to go to USA. And now, 360 turn. Yeah, we're, we're at Revenge of the Sith, part three. Um, <laughs> sadly, though, we're stuck with Gary Bateman, or Batman as Jar Jar Binks. Um, <laughs> me so so sorry okay I'm done <laughs> me so like the bubble <laughs> oh it's breaking down <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> on that note <laughs> I believe this will be the end of period two <laughs> we'll be right back after a short break baseball fans Check out the Baseball Together podcast. Your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes, present new episodes for the entire baseball family every Tuesday. Available on all your favorite podcast apps and YouTube. Come join our baseball family where we do baseball together. All right, welcome back to period three. Now, we've been doing the past few episodes beard tournaments. Uh, first one we did was MLB. Last episode was NBA, which we were shocked with. That, totally uh, blown away. Yeah. Val- Jonas Valanciunas won on, uh, I feel it was an upset. I feel it was an upset for the um, NBA. It was, it was an upset in regards to, I did not think he had the best beard in the NBA. Uh and I definitely hung my hat on James Harden. I said, he, he's going to win the NBA, and he could win the whole thing. Yeah, well. I, I mean, was wrong. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it, hell, hell it, was, it, it was my pick, too. You Look know, at my so. background. My background has two people who aren't even in the tournament anymore. <laughs> right? You should change that then. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it was a big upset. I mean, now he joins uh, Charlie Blackmon for uh, the Final Four. And I, just before we continue, the, the final percentage was Valanchunas with 55% of the votes and Harden with 45%. And we, yeah, I mean, it was a close one. It, wasn't it, like was, it was close. A big blowout. It wasn't like it was a big blowout. It was a close one. But I I was not expecting the results. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting it. Look at this beard here. Look look at this beard here. I, screen screen screwing me up. Um <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's there. It's boom. It's out there. He looks like a damn Muppet with that beard. How do you not like that beard? <laughs> I'm not t- taking anything away from, from Jonas's beard, but come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of Muppet. First thing I popped in my head was, today's episode is brought to you by, by letter A. <laughs> but, uh, 
this episode, uh, we're going to be doing the NFL round. Uh, yep. So, so let's we're going to talk what... about the, the nominees, and we'll cover everything else after that. Now, I know so a lot of the players, you can't see them because of the helmets, but we'll have, to, we'll have the pictures up on what they look like without their helmets. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see exactly what they look like in their beards. Um, so first up is uh, Mr. Fitzmagic himself, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, damn, that's just the, the spectacular beard. Um, it's full. I mean, that's a full beard. You know, uh, turned up on the sides, but it's full. I mean, this, like, this... like we said in other, other episodes, that's a pillow. I don't know if we've, we've made this, this comparison to anyone's beard yet, but this is very Viking-like. And he plays for the Dolphins. It's, it's a very Norse, Viking, Thor-like beard. Now, if you play for the, <laughs> now, if you play for the Vikings... That would be funny because, of, right. you know. Um, yeah, no, that's that. That's definitely a full beard. I mean, he's, he definitely, yeah. That is thick. Um, it definitely traps something. It, yep, it is definitely saving saving some soup if he has some soup. Um, could be oh, used maybe. as a bib. Um, when, when he's out in the field, he couldn't eat a snack. Just grab something out. You know, one time at a, a press conference after a game, he dressed up like uh, Conor McGregor. Hmm. Look at him and tell me you with don't that, see the, the little with, resemblance. With that, <laughs> with, with, with that beard, you could. With that beard, he could. Um, yeah, with that beard, I think he could. I'm not making any predictions because I got hosed last time. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Uh, I agree. No predictions. I'm... No, I'm in the same boat. No predictions because uh, of, yeah, not going to work. But this is a strong beard. Um, this, this is top flight. I actually think at this point MLB might have the might have had the weakest beards. Um, so far, but so this far I think it's I think so far MLB is going to you know has that so far. But this is a a quality beard. Looks fantastic. Very full, uh, good length, uh, overall solid, solid beard. Yeah, it's not like it's like he sticks his finger in a light socket beard. It's it's full. You know, pillow, storage for snacks. Um, you know, definitely, he, that's definitely going to be a tough one. Next, but again, nom- go ahead, sorry. But, but then again, look what we said last, you know, last episode. Right. Uh, you guys, the listeners, you guys, uh, you guys proved us wrong, um, and you told us who you felt had the best beard, and that's why we're doing this. Um, so moving on, we're going on to Odell Beckham Jr. Um, he wasn't always known for a beard in the early days of his career, but he's really come on strong with a beard the last few years. Um, it's definitely fluffy. Yeah. It's, it's full. Not as big though as as Fitzpatrick's. Yeah, not as big as Fitzpatrick. Yeah, not. I mean, it's definitely full. You know, that's you know, but it's it, not like it's full, full as in it's big. No, but as we've seen, full, super full isn't always. I mean, look at how far Harper went into the MLB rounds. Yeah, he without went to having the a, a crazy full beard. Um, it's not super clean, meaning like it's not super trimmed. Um, good length. Yeah, it's, it's shorter than Fitzpatrick's, but it's good length. Very short. Um, but it's very full. It does not look like a thin beard by any means. No, um, by not. Definitely I would say th- this is a, this is another solid beard. Uh, and I would I could see it getting a good amount of votes from the listeners. I can see it getting the votes. But I mean, I, do, do, do I think it's going to go past the first round? I'll make this prediction. And I'll tell you who he's paired with. Yeah. Um, moving on, our third nominee is Joey Sly. Um, so he's running into an issue I've I've had with a lot with some of the beards. It's it's too much chin, um, under chin area. That's a bib. That's a pillow. Good lord. Um, similar to Turner, and and um. 
I want to see somebody with a, like somebody playing football with a ZZ Top spear. <laughs> and and uh and Fraley in uh the MLB rounds. It's it's more chin length than it is anything else. Uh I would not say this is a a strong beard sports wise. Um it's a it's not a bad beard. I think with this one it's more it, it, because a lot, a lot of beers we've seen has, like you see around the mustache area, uh, full, and then that that matches with the beard itself. Where this, it's the length of the you know the beard is like looks like what two inches, give or take. Give or take, yeah. You know, so and that seems to be consistent all around. It's not just like at the chin; it's this length and you know full around. It's like two inches, give or take, down all all the way around. So. And look, I don't want to take away anything from these guys who have a strong chin beard because it does take patience to grow that. Um, but to me, while it's a it's a long beard, it's not all 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 over all around a strong beard. No, it's I mean it's it's definitely one to have in this competition, but it's not like you said. It's it's more Amish than lumberjack. Yeah, I can see the Amish in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely Amish. <laughs> He's going to go turn some butter soon. Uh, moving on, we got Ezekiel Elliott next. Now, so, in this picture with his hair, it looks like he did stick his finger in a light socket. I'm sorry, <laughs> it does. He got a beard and hair that and hair look in this picture that they match. They complement each other. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely, they do match. I mean, that's definitely, it, it looks like it's a it's a trim beer. Like, it's actually, like, taken care of. It does look like he takes really good care of it. Um, and if you're, if, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see um, it, he has a very well-maintained beard. It's long. It's got good length on it. I wouldn't say oh, it yeah. doesn't. And, and it's definitely full. Um but it's trimmed. It's not like it's all over the place. Right. It's not as trimmed as Harper's, but it's not as all over the place as like Valanchunas. Yeah. It's almost like a good in-between. Mm -hmm. um, it has, has good length, but it's also trimmed up around, so it's not like everywhere. That's what I kind of dig, dig, I I dig this one. I, I, I would, if, if I was voting, I would vote for this one, I think. This is a Depending, good one. Depending on who he's going against. Oh well, yeah, I mean, but still, I mean, it's it. This one definitely could be a strong beard in Florida. I would say the only knock against this beard is he's a cowboy. <laughs> See, wonder why we're knocking again. <laughs> <laughs> um, conversely, on the other side of the rivalry, our next nominee is Jason Kelsey from the Eagles. <laughs> but on his defense, he wasn't there for the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris of the Ace will be very happy to know that there is an eagle in this tournament. So, uh, we openly talked about that on the show when I was on, uh, where I lost. Um, a little better? No, no, I'm fine. No, it's <laughs> it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Adam Van, the guy who who did beat me in the in this first round of the tournament of champions. Uh, great dude, uh, has a good podcast at odds, at odds with wrestling. Um, super nice guy. Never met him before until that night. And we had a blast. Um, so no, no ill feelings, no bad will. Um, had a good time. Um, moving on back to the beard. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why we're here. Um, this one's full. This one is full all around. I mean, you can't even see his mouth. No. Um, and then he's got the the mullet going on. He's Chewbacca. Which, which really adds to it. Um, he can just almost pass his Chewbacca with that beard. I mean, it's just full. It's everywhere. It's, like I said, you, you, you can't even see his mouth. He looks like a dude who would have played in the 80s or the late 70s. Like, he's... Yeah, I can see it, that. It is a burly beard. Yeah, it's, like That's I said... That's a new he, adjective for this show is burly. 
we better put that one in our book. Hey, there you go. We should make a book of, you know, just a, a, of, of, a, of the terms a we used to describe yeah. beards. Um, well, not just beards, but anything. That you know, is a, a, a yeah. We 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 do. We can use the Ripken effect. We can put that in there. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that shirt. Uh, I'm going to rem- remind them about that Ripken effect. We need to get that happening. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, that beard is definitely a full one. I, you know, like I said all the time, it, you can't even see his mouth. He, he's just there. It's it has the elements of why I think Blackman won the MLB tournament, but it's not. As out of control, it's big. It, it's, like it's it's just like everywhere. It's there. Yeah, it's very full, very thick. Um, thick. Let's put it lightly on that. It one. does look fairly well maintained. It does not look scraggly or all over the place. Um, I wonder how he eats. I mean, I would think you'd have to be chewing on it on that. It happens. It happens. I would, I would imagine like it just. Doesn't take a bite. It's like uh, he has to shampoo that out, probably. That's why they make beard wash. That's why they make beard wash. That's uh, Th- this that's, is a, a that's strong contender. Crazy. Yeah, I feel this is a strong contender. Yes, agree because that that yeah, he definitely I think could go far in the tournament. He could then, be. He could give. I think he could give Elliot a a, a run. If, if those two are paired up, it'll be a rivalry, not only in football. That, but might, in have pairing, that might have know, to be a pairing, honestly. That might be have to be a pairing. Well, the Eagles and Cowboys are always a rival, aren't they? Yeah, that might that might so, have to be a first round matchup. So that could be interesting to see uh, see how that could uh, come out. Um, definitely. Final one we got is Keenan Allen. Um. Same thing as Joey Sly. It's got a lot of length. Very, yeah, that, that definitely has length, but it's not. It, 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 even on the sides, it doesn't look trimmed. The sides are longer than Sly's, uh, but the mustache area is very much the same. Um, it's it's not bad by any means. No, I mean he could braid that. He could. Um, yeah, he could definitely braid that one because that looks that looks longer. Um. Then you know, then you slides. know, then, yeah, then slides. It definitely looks longer because it, slides didn't look like it went down to the jersey. This one looks like it goes down to the jersey. You know, to, you know to, down to uh, the, uh, the turtleneck area. In that, yeah, yeah. So this one, yeah, it, it they're definitely a good competitor for it, but it's definitely there. Like definitely, you can hide food in that. <laughs> Or Birds could be, make a nest there. Uh, I was just um, going to say a bird could fly out of that and you'd be like, oh, hey, there, there he goes. Uh, I think overall, uh, this one, even Slides, I think they're all strong contenders. Uh, now, we're not picking, we're not making a prediction. But who would you <laughs> say what had your favorite beard out of the NFL beards? Uh, that's a tough one because... Uh, I'd say this magic has one. You know, I like that one. And I'm just calling that just because it's stuck in my head now. Fitz Magic? It's a yeah. great nickname. <laughs> it's stuck in my head now. And uh da, 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 I'm drawing a blank on you know, Eagles one. Kelsey. Kelsey, yes. Kelsey. Sorry, I don't know why I was drawing a blank on his name. It's okay. Uh, I think him and and uh, Fitz Magic definitely are two good ones, I feel. I, I, I would agree with, with Fitzmagic and Kelsey. I think Elliot has got a really good beard. Um, like we said, we definitely got to put Kelsey and Elliot together. I, that, definitely, I, that definitely has to be a pairing. I actually think Odell Beckham Jr. has a decent beard. It's not crazy long, but it's not a bad beard either. It's it's no different to me than Harper's was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not as, like, I guess, maintained as Harper's was, but... Or as right. hard as is, but uh, no, it definitely has a you know has a has a nice you know short beard for it. So uh, with with these nominees talked about, um, we're now going to be passing it on to you, the listener. Uh, the day this show's posted, uh, the, actually, we'll wait till Monday. That way, the show's posted and the YouTube uh, video is up. 
So you have chances to listen and chances to see. Uh, Monday, after the show posts, the first tournament poll will come up, and you will then, the listener, make the vote. Tell us who you think. And that will be on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash notanothersportspod. Um, you guys have been awesome. Yeah, definitely good. Uh, a, a lot of, of response to this. Definitely a lot of uh, interaction with this. This and is I'm, definitely a good one. I'm happy about it. I mean, this is why oh, we're absolutely. doing it. Um, and, and you, the listeners, you all are are making this happen. I mean, it's it's your response that's continuing to make this happen. So thank you very much for, for participating and being involved with this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So with, uh, yeah, so once this posts on Monday, go Monday. on YouTube and you, you'll see the uh, videos of everything. So that definitely, uh, yeah, just go on YouTube, see the videos for everything, and uh, you definitely be able to see who you're voting for. And like Jason said, we'll go on uh, Facebook and it'll be there. So on that note, that'll be the end of period three. This would definitely be an interesting one, just because of some of the some of the beers there. Yeah, yeah, well, um, I, I think that it's going to be another close one. I think it's going to be another tight one, just like the NBA. Um, we could be surprised. I mean, we might we might personally have an idea who we think could win it, and that could go out the door, and that's cool. I I like that we were surprised. I like oh, that yeah. the listeners they told us who they wanted to move on to the NBA or to the finals for the NBA. Um, so with that said, one real quick plug, uh, you can catch me every month on the Philly baseball together podcast with my co-host Tori. Uh, once a month, we'll bring you our thoughts on the fills that is going to be under the umbrella of the baseball together podcast network. And you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, the most recent episode dropped, uh, today when we recorded april 31st so that'll be available for listen uh by the time april you... 31st yes it's may 1st right now as we're wrap wrapping this up but <laughs> when we started recording it had dropped that morning um so when you listen to this if you want you can jump over and listen to that uh we talk about the good and the bad of the month of april for the fills and you can get that wherever you get your podcasts um with that, thank you for joining us for episode 19 of the non Sports Podcast. Uh, you can find us online at non Sports Pod at facebook.com slash non Sports Podcast. Uh, feel free to like, comment, or message us. We're on Twitter. Our Twitter blew up this past week because I tweeted Uniwatch, a picture of the WNBC uh, softball jerseys with the Stern Show crew in from the 80s. Uh, that subsequently got retweeted to uh, Jason from the Stern Show, and he retweeted it. Uh, so we we're very surprised by that. We made not only did Uniwatch retweet it, we made the Uniwatch ticker on their website. So that was yeah, that's cool. a big thing. As a as a life as a longtime listener a uh, reader of Uniwatch and listener of their new podcast, uh, very cool as a fan. Um, the non Other Sports Podcast is available for streaming or download at Anchor.fm. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podcast Attic, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Please don't for, or forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Um, we're on YouTube, as we mentioned during the beer discussion. Uh, please feel free to, to subscribe to us, to like our videos, to comment on them, uh, share them if you want. Uh, I know some of you like that. Some of you like listening to us. It's all good. You have multiple avenues to listen and watch us. Uh, use them to your advantage. We appreciate you sharing and listening and telling us what you think. We get feedback uh, personally from different listeners, and it's always awesome stuff. Uh, so thank you for, for listening. Uh, my name's Jason. I'm David. With that, we'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.